Hey, how you doing, brother? This guy right here sold me a broken iPod. Hi, Thanks for meeting me. Uh, Royce, yeah, right? Yeah, nice man, to meet cool. you, man. All right, yeah, cool, cool. Like brand oh, nice, new. nice. I gotcha. just needs a battery, but it's like brand new. It works perfect. Okay, sounds yeah. good. So he claimed on the listing that it just needed a new battery to be installed. But when I plugged it in, nothing happened at all. And that's when I noticed that a couple of the pins on the 30-pin connector were completely bent. Ooh. And that's when I thought, instead of just repairing this with a normal 30-pin connector, let's do something cool and try to add USB-C to an iPod Classic. So let's crack this thing open and see how we're going to do this. Luckily, this iPod already had the iPod iFlash hard drive mod, so that's one thing I'm not gonna have to worry about. In order to utilize the original iPod shell, I needed to figure out a way to hold the USB-C port while also filling out the gap of the old port. To do this, I'm using this two-part plastic weld putty to fill the hole in, and then once it hardens up, we'll drill a perfect size hole to fit the USB-C port. This stuff is kind of messy, but I just used a paper towel dipped in some alcohol to clean up the excess. Once that hardens up, I think it's gonna look pretty good. Now we can move on to removing the old 30-pin connector. I'm gonna use my hot air rework station to do this, so I'm just putting some tape down to protect the other components on the board. Once we get it off, we need to solder in four wires. These are the only ones we should need to be able to connect to the computer and also charge the device. Moving back to the shell, now that that putty is nice and rock hard, I'm going to go ahead and try my best to drill a hole in it to fit the USB-C. I'm just working at it really slow back and forth between the Dremel and the knife. Once I get it fitting in there really snugly, I'm going to go ahead and tack it in place with a little bit more of that putty. And now that that's done, we're ready to start putting the iPod back together. The last thing we have to do is solder those four wires to the USB-C board itself and then carefully put all the components in the right places so nothing gets pinched when we're closing it back up. And now for the moment of truth, it's time to plug it into my MacBook and see if it will sync up to my iTunes. And it works. I'm really happy we were able to save this one and add a cool new component to charge it with. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about USB-C on an iPod Classic.